This place is packed this afternoon, and we're, we're happy about that. I know that you're here to hear a great preacher, and he's always a part of Because of the Times. And Brother Jeff Arnold is one tremendous preacher. I'm anticipating hearing him preach. Brother Arnold, accept the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. thing between you and chicken. I'm very honored to be with you again. Thank you so very much for the mangan and all that other stuff they say about everybody. You said it all for us. Brother Keys was here a minute ago and told everybody thanks for everything and I appreciate that. Thank you for all the prayer. People that have come up and said they prayed for me. Um, I, I guess I'd like to just start preaching. Well, that's, that's what I plan on doing. You have your Bibles, and so we'll turn to the book of Luke chapter 5. I'd like to go there very quickly. I realize uh, time's of the essence, and yet time does not bother me. I tell people where I preach everywhere, if you're going to hell, you can afford to be late. the truth. That's the truth. Okay, I'm going to try to cover all this as fast as I can. Ready? I'm going to read with verse 12. And it came to pass that when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, seeing Jesus, fell on his face, besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Put forth his hands and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. Immediately the leprosy departed. Charge him, tell no man, go and show thyself to the priest. Offer for thy cleansing according to Moses' commandment for the testimony unto them. So much the more he went, fame went abroad of him, and great multitudes came to hear and to be healed. That's the problem we've had in UPC. We've only come to hear. We have married ourselves to our doctrine and hope the rest just works. Well... You've had enough good preaching. Let me just talk. I, I, I'm going to talk to you for a little while, if I can, on the, on the subject. Expectation must always precede miraculous experiences. Expectation. Now, we've heard all these guys telling us this stuff, and it's been phenomenal. But, but I, I think God let me have a key, or at least a key part to the puzzle here. The only thing we're lacking is we don't expect it. Yeah. That's right. You can believe something and not expect it. Well, Jesus bless the preaching, help me to do a good job. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Expectation. I preached one time at Brother Paul Cook's church in uh, Ohio and I used the title and I thought about using it again but maybe if I don't use it, just remember this statement if you don't remember anything expectation has always been and will always be the birthplace for the miraculous now, I'm not going to resurrect the dead either you just respond or you don't respond okay expectation the reason why a lot of the people in your church sit like this it's because they don't expect nothing to happen, and that's why they sit next to the idiots they sit next to. I said they. Don't worry about him. I opened my wallet, and he was in it. Now, you hear me? Right now. The very fantastic thing that this wonderful brother Keys just said wants to happen. I know he said it'll be tonight. That'll be fine. But it wants to happen right now. If you can get baptized, I'm going to get rude. If you can get pregnant with expectation. If you can get filled with a, just an expect. Never mind. I don't have enough faith. You don't need enough faith. If you just expect God to back up his word. God will back up His Word. 
You ain't got to feel it. And you ain't got to understand it. You sit down. We are a movement that's being held hostage by our lack of understanding. Let me tell you something. Precepts can be two things. They can either be your prison house or a pathway to something you've never had. How you perceive things. How you see things. Let, let, let me read you what, what Webster said. Expectation. Now this will be real deep for you Greek scholars. Looking forward to something to happen. Was that beyond your use? Did you get it? Let me go a little further. Looking forward to something. Possessing wealth or fortune. The hope of receiving something. Experiencing a future event. Now listen to this last one. Anticipating something to occur which causes considerable degree of confidence. I heard a lady say one time, crawling on her hands and knees, if I can but touch the hem of his garment... It wasn't because she had great faith even. It wasn't because she understood that God's substance can get into a piece of fabric. She just said, I expect if I touch the hem of his garment, God's going to start acting like he is. Well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to blow you up here. You said, I'm just trying to help you. I, I feel God spoke to me. And God seemed to say to me, express truth is not enough. We must experience what we declare. I'm going to try it again. The promises of God are insufficient of themselves. For the promises of God are mainly His intentions of what He plans to do. Their fulfillment is in our hands. Either we expect them to happen or they don't happen. I know a nation called Israel who is pregnant with promises for 40 years and died on the wrong side of the river. Man, maybe, maybe I didn't get your attention. I should have used a different label for my sermon. I'm pregnant. How about you? Now, did I get your attention? Yeah, I'm pregnant, Jesse Williams. How about you? Boy, you bunch of wussies. You're so scared to get off your little image. I, I'm pregnant. How about you? Well, I, I was sitting back there and while that guy was preaching. The Holy Ghost gave me a thought. I wrote it down. I'm not that smart. He says you only get pregnant by getting intimate with the Word. You're going to have to spend time with the Word if you're going to come out waddling. Pregnant folks walk different. Pregnant folks act different. Pregnant folks look different. Pregnant folks eat different. Pregnant folks don't do certain things. I'm expecting God to show up and show off and show out. You sit down, I, got, I only got just a few minutes here. Listen, the purpose of, oh, hold on a minute. The purpose of God's promises, His prophetic projections, is only one thing. To inspire in us expectation. Because if you expect, it will give birth to faith, and faith will give birth to a result. We got churches full of people who go around saying, I believe in Jesus. Well, ain't that neat. Have you ever had a miracle? No, I don't believe miracles. Do you have anything going on in your life that's supernatural? Hey, you got all the Brother Bernard's books, so do I. But I'm going to tell you about that stuff. Oh, I know the doc sitting over there. That's fine. Let me tell you about great stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Powerful stuff. But if the precept and the promise... Does it become an experience? We will become frustrated and damn and condemn everybody that don't look and act and dress like us. If, 
If you experience what has been expressed, it doesn't bother you about other people. You're so in love with the Word. You're so... You're so impacted with the supernatural that you refuse to let the natural hold the supernatural hostage. Am I doing good yet? I'm going as fast as I can. Listen to what I'm going to say. The Spirit... Where are you, Dr. Bernard? Listen to me. Good stuff you got. But the Spirit that inspired the printed page is the true real power not the page, not the words, not the letters. They will do nothing for you. But if you can make contact with the, the spirit that inspired the word, the life that gives the word, life will enter into you and you will be transformed. You will be changed. You, you'll be better than status quo. Okay, if you don't remember anything else, say, say, say this. My heart's beating so fast right now, I feel like I'm running on a fast train. Here's what you got to do. It's time for us right now to trade objective truth for subjective experience. I believe in God. That ain't got nothing to do with it. Do you know God? Well, I believe in the Holy Ghost. That's fine. Have you got the Holy Ghost? Well, I believe miracle signs are wonders. Well, have you got any? Don't keep pointing to the book because the book keeps pointing to him. When, when, when I was in my motel this morning, I wrote it. Doctors expect a patient to get better. They expect that the operation will be successful. Mechanics labor hard on your automobile. They expect the, pe- the problem to go away. Builders erect structures. They expect it to hold together. Ladies lay- labor over food. They expect it to taste good. Investors get involved. They expect a profit and an increase. But when it comes to the spiritual, we just sat on our fat rear end and don't expect nothing. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, we do. We expect a preacher to preach till his socks falls down while we critique him. I wonder what would happen in the next six minutes if you expected Jesus to walk down your pew. If you expected the Lord of all diseases, the master of all devils, the king of all frustration to climb over somebody and put it, hey, 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 and put his hand on you. Well, can I get a few people to just look left to right and just say, pardon me, I'm fixing to have a fit. Because I'm expecting. I'm expecting he that has begun a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm expecting the power that gave me the written word wants to give me life. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to raise everybody one more. You sit down. I'm just going to read my notes. I ain't got time to act dignified. I'm very dignified. I just wrote it down. Okay, I got in the dark in a prayer meeting this morning. I expect God to hear me when I call. Now see, that was as weak as... The Bible said, oh, let the king hear me when I call. I expect God when I say, now Lord, he said, it's Jeffrey. I mean, I don't want to be rude, and I know, Randy, you don't know nothing about movies. I do. Here I come to save the day. That means that mighty mouse is on his way. Well, every time I cry out, hey, Jesus, I need it. Here I come to save today. 
That means that Jesus is on his way because expectation is the birthplace for miracles. Yeah, you be seated just another minute. I, I, this is too good. I can't quote all this. I expect God to answer me. I expect God to help me. I'm going to tell you what I told Brother Hoffman's church the other night. It's easy to have a miracle. Here's what a miracle is, Mark. It's simple. God acting like himself. No, that went over like a lead balloon. You ain't going to have nothing where, when you come up with cancer or diabetes or leukemia or a bunch of hell and chaos and trouble. You'll never see God go, mm, boy, this is a tough one. I'm going to have to really breathe hard. Not hardly. There's never been a demonstration of all God's power. There's never been a flow one time of all God's power. He's almighty. He's all powerful. He's the king of glory. He told one person, if I by the finger of God cast out devils. Know of a sureness, the kingdom of God has come to you. Which means that we're putting up with too many devils because the kingdom of God don't allow none. You, you can sit down. I, I'm it's seven minutes after two. I'm going as fast as I can. Expectation releases the miraculous, and the miraculous. Where's Sister Mangan? Sister Mangan, I'd call my bride and told her, "You ain't never been no better, girl." Good. That's an insult to the word. Good. You're what we call in New York the cat's meow. I'll tell you something else. If it was any better than that, it would have been wrong. But here's what a miracle is when God steps up and says amen to his own word. Said, are you talking about me, Jeffrey? Well, then I'll just back up me. You're not hearing me yet. Brother Key's headed right. You're afraid to put your foot out. Why? Because you're lacking one thing. Not confidence, not a willing to obey, but you don't expect nothing to happen. Man, when I pray for people, I expect stuff to happen. I expect blind eyes to open. I expect deaf ears to stop. Oh, yes, I do. I expect diabetes to shut its nasty mouth. I expect the lost to be saved. I expect the hurting to be helped. I expect the broken to be fixed. I am pregnant with expectation. Here, give me just a few minutes. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. Listen, expectation becomes the oxygen that breathes life into your effort. Expectation is what allows the impossible to become realized. Remember, we talk and blow and go about Elijah, 1 uh, Kings 17, 18, and 19. But he built the altar expecting fire. What do you build your altar besides hoping you'll please everybody's opinion? Do you worship and clap your hands and say, Hallelujah, so everybody around you won't think you're a nincompoop? Their opinion in 50 cents will buy you a cup of coffee. You don't need their opinion. There ain't but one person you want to please. I'm telling you, the potentate is on the prowl right now. He is trying to find somebody that expects him to heal, that expects him to save, that expects him to give revival. And without expectation, you have frustration. But if you have expectation, you can experience transformation. You sit down. I'm going as fast as I can. It was Elijah who went up on Mount Carmel, who got in that fetal position, his head between his knees, and prayed the promise into reality. He was pregnant with a promise. Isn't it funny? God said, show yourself to Ahab and I'll send rain. He showed himself to Ahab and there wasn't no rain. 
Because the promise is God's intention to burden you expectation. Well, uh, wait, wait a minute. Because you're going to leave here another, another night and it ain't going to be like this at your house. You don't have to be created. But I'm going to tell you something. When you are pregnant with expectation, you're going to have to live through a lot of nincompoops that run with you who tell you when you're looking for rain and they said there is nothing. Expectation is the one that says, well, then go again. Well, there's nothing. I don't care. Go again. How long do I go? Go until your nothing becomes something. Go until you experience the intention of the promised word of God. He's not making fun of us. He's not laughing at us. Hey, sit, sit down just a second. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. <laughs> Expectation holds on. When the closest people to you say, well, I guess it wasn't the will of God. As if them loonies knew what the will of God was. They're about as spiritual as a dead frog. Isn't it funny how you step out and say, I'm going to stand here and believe God. You'll have all these well-wishers saying, now let's not get radical. Now, you know, you might look bad. I've never seen a good-looking corpse anyway. I thought you're dead. I thought you're dead in Christ and your life is hid in Christ. I... I didn't know you were trying to look good. What are you, some kind of TV cowboy? They powdering up your face so you can smile at the audience? You think that babe crawling on her hands and knees look good? Coming through spit and dirt and trash and junk, trying to get through. The only thing kept her moving. Hey, expectation will take you past discomfort. Expectation will take you past misunderstanding. Expectation will take you past other people saying, I feel like preaching. Expectation will take you past stuff that don't make no sense. I'm living my life right now. By an expectation that he's coming for me and I'm leaving. And there's a lot of days when I don't feel nothing. I'm discouraged. I'm frustrated. Things haven't worked. He didn't sit down. Sit down. I, you, you, I, I didn't ask you for this, Mike, but could you, could you get me a scripture? 57 and 1 of Isaiah. I just buried a little baby that I was expecting to get healed. And I just buried one of our senior saints expecting to get healed. And I got a whole rodeo of, 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 of lasso Pentecostals who, as soon as they got dead, they looked at me and said, Nah, there you go with that stupid healing junk. I said, That kid died. I said, Well, why don't you just spit on the doctor? He's the one who's working on her. Why don't you damn and condemn him? Why do you pick on me? I'm doing everything I can by faith. Contrary to what's been told on TV and radio, God doesn't work for me. He has never, he has never surrendered his sovereignty. There are some mysteries in the things of God. He does not tell me, but does not stop me from expecting God to answer. I'm going to practice my faith. I'm going to stretch out my hand. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to pray. I'm going to reach out, and I'm going to leave the results with God, but I don't want him to tell me that last day, well, I'd have done more for you, Willie, but you weren't expecting anything. You, you see it? You ready? Well, watch this. I feel God gave this scripture to me the other day to help me. Maybe some of you, when you pray and you fast and you seek God, and for some reason God says no. The Listen, righteous perish. Here it is. And no man layeth it to heart. The righteous perish, and no man lays it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. Yeah. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. There's your answer. God steps down sometimes in people's lives and snatches them out of here because he sees what's coming down the road and he, and he says, no. I'm telling you what I know. Hezekiah would have been better off without his 15 years. He'd have been better off just dying in the faith instead of just half backsliding like he did. There's some folks God takes out of here. It's a mercy. They might not have been saved. 
I'm sorry. Didn't mean to mess your meeting up. I got 11 minutes. Just hold on. I'm trying to get to my message here. I really am. You know, sometimes you don't have any faith. You don't have any faith. Three times I can find in the Bible where the Lord gave miracles to people that had no faith. I know that'll kill you. Don't get mad, Doc. Don't get mad. But I'm proving to you by the, by the Bible. You know that one that you always worship, the Bible? You know, you bookworms, you, you Bible thumpers, you Bible people. I got a bunch of Bible quizzes and quote scriptures and can't stay moral. I got people who can name and claim their best little scripture they want, and they got the morals of a barnyard dog. It's not the Bible that's going to take care of you. It's the spirit that makes the Bible alive. It's that thing we call the God breathe. But I'm going to tell you, if that breath doesn't get in you, you're just quoting scripture. Last time I checked, the devil knows more Bible than you do. And guess what? He's still a Bible. He's still a devil. Didn't fix him. Well, I memorized 433,000 verses. That's wonderful. You ever win anybody to God? I'm not into that. Have you ever cast out a devil? I don't go near him. Have you ever gone to the ICU ward and prayed for someone dying? No, I just had the will of God to take him out. Oh, shut your mouth. I don't even want to hear what you got to say, you moron. I'm sorry. You've had all the classic guys. Let me just be who I am, okay? I have not stayed in this movement because you like me. I stayed in this movement because he liked me. I'm not leaving because you don't like me. You just have to put up with me. Bunch of Pentecostal prim and honors just thumping their Bibles. Like the seven sons of Sceva messing with the devil. And the devil said, you got to be kidding. This junk don't work by proxy. We adjure thee by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. The next verse should have said, of whom we don't know. <laughs> there was no faith when God raised Lazarus from the dead. None. I don't care what any of you say. I debate all of you. None. Oh, Martha had four days ago faith. And then she had future tense faith. She didn't have nothing for now. And the last time I checked, the Bible says, now faith is. Amen. And Mary got to blame in Jesus. You been here, my brother, and died. You're going to cause all this, you know. <laughs> there was no faith, Mark, none at all. So the Lord says, I'll tell you what, because I'm God, I'm so powerful, I can take, when you don't have no faith, I'll take one act of obedience and I'll transform it into faith. Roll the stone away. Well, I wish I had time. I'd like to talk to some of you spiritual giants. You know what one of the biggest problems you're fighting against? It ain't the devil. Excuse me, Brother Barnes. It ain't the devil. It's those five enemies called your flesh. Your flesh is what fights the miraculous. It was their flesh that said, Behold, by now he stinketh. How come you can use your senses against supernatural things and not use your senses for supernatural things? Why can you see things that are bad and you cannot see things getting better? I, I, I'll debate any of you. There was no faith when Naaman got healed. None. N-O-N-E. None. That means a whole bunch of nothing. None. None. The guy got healed and he had a ticked off attitude. Contrary to what some of you think, I have your attitude right. No, you don't. God's so nice. He'll fix a jerk. He's got a horrible attitude. He's ticked off. He's mad. He's driving away. You know the story. And finally one of the servants said, Oh, why don't you get off your high horse, Flash? And my God, your nose is falling off and your legs falling off. Why don't you just get in the dumb water? You see what bothered him? Freddie, you know what bothered him? How could I watch human reasoning, human intellect, human understanding? How could I put putrefying, rotting flesh into a dirty, muddy river and expect it to get right? Well, if you expect God to do, He don't have to use your understanding. He doesn't have to use your comprehension. He'll, he'll 
you'll just respond to your expectation and you will experience the supernatural. Can I, I need 10 minutes, 10 minutes is fine, just 10 minutes. I'm, I'm trying to get to my message, expectation. I, I, I got so much I want to say. I read this Bible and I found scriptures that said, God is pregnant with expectation. Yes, he is. He said, when I open my mouth, I expect stuff to work. <laughs> Psalms 33 and 9 said, he commanded and it was. He just demanded and it stood firm. He expected matter to come from nothing. And he was a world. Made this giant mud ball and he said, that's just what I expected. Fish to swim and fowl to fly and critters to creep. Some other creeps. He said, Alex, you're not hearing me. When he got ready, Uncle Billy, to build a church, he expects the church to, to enforce his victory. Anything less is unacceptable. I only find one scripture the entire writ that he ever cursed the creation. One. He cursed the fig tree because it met unfulfilled expectation. I expect that tree to produce. I gave it everything to produce. It's not doing. Curse you. You're dying at the roots. Let me tell you, that's how the miraculous usually works. When somebody speaks a word of faith to you, if you expect it, it will always start in the invisible. It will not start in the leaves. It will start below the surface. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care what any of you say. When you get the Holy Ghost, you get the Holy Ghost before you talk in tongues. Listen carefully. You get the Holy Ghost in your spirit, man, in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when your heart makes contact with God, your mouth testifies that it has made contact. If you don't talk in tongues, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Why is it that we can be so strong that we expect people to get the Holy Ghost supernaturally talking in tongues? We believe there's no such thing as mental assent. And I believe in Jesus. And, and easy believe is, I accepted the law as my personal savior. That's great. Good step in the right direction. Keep moving. That's fine. It ain't no problem. But don't stop there. Don't build the condominium there. We've got denominations that have built the condominium there. Don't stop there. Keep moving. We believe, I wish I could get a witness here. We believe that when people come to the altar to get the Holy Ghost, pow! The power of another world will hit them. They will get intoxicated, inebriated, infused with the nature of, another, of a God from another world. Could I get a witness? But then when it comes to miracle signs and oneness and healing and all kinds of ministrations of the Spirit, now all of a sudden it becomes mental. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. You, 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 don't, you don't need my sermon. I'm sorry. It's only the touch that transforms people. It's only the touch of God that emancipates people. Jesus couldn't do mighty works in Nazareth. Not because they were wicked. They didn't have no expectation. They didn't expect him to do nothing. He turned around and said, no problem, I'll take my toys and go elsewhere. Read it, Mark 6. He only healed a few people. He took his power, his miracles, his desire, his intentions, picked them up, put them in his overnight bag, walked just a little ways down the street to Capernaum. Here it is. And he healed every one of them. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, but there's one Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've got to believe what he used to do, he wants to do now. You cannot save healing and deliverance and victory for the millennial reign. Because in the millennial reign, ain't nobody going to be sick. Man, this, this line of owl, owls here just screeching once in a while. I'm, I'm going to, excuse me, I don't want to embarrass you. This might be my last time here. I may have to be going away to heaven. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing at my church. I put a, oh, you, oh, you want to look at, oh, I'm sorry. You, here, pass them out. Come on, Matt, I shouted with you. Put one on, buddy. Oh, I, I'll have it. 
Now you think I'm kidding you. You know what would happen in your church this Sunday? If everybody in your church decided to either wear the sign or express the feeling, you'd preach till your socks fell down. You'd pray for folks until they got healed and delivered and set free. See, these are some of my people over here. When I get to preaching, man, I just look, I said, anybody, they just hold that sign up. Expectancy high level right here. Wonder what would happen, Mark, if we decided to hold that up and up. That we showed God. We expect Him. We don't deserve it. We just expect mercy. We expect deliverance. We expect help. Hey, Brother Henson, what would happen out there in Flint if you had five or six hundred of your people and you got ready to preach or the choir got ready to sing? I, I asked some people before, you sit down, I asked some people before I preached that they'd put these on. Some of them said no. I wanted to say, I hope you die, sucker. But I didn't because I'm a Christian. I just thought it. <laughs> you think I'm kidding you? You know, when I go to General Conference, I went to see you, and I, I listened to you preaching, you and Stone King. I got out there, man. I, I did my inventory as usual. How you doing, bud? What's going down, man? Are we, are we fixing to have church here? Oh, yeah. we fixing to worship with the choir? Oh, yeah. Son, I went in the General Conference this year and went to sit down next to some people, and I did this. Says, God is alive. Hey, buddy, let's rock and roll up here. Let's, let's set this place... I'm, I'm like them black folks where I preach in them conventions. I put my finger up. I just went over here. Well, Barney, what do you say? We're going to have a time tonight? We're going to rock and roll? going to believe God? Have you got any faith? you expect God to do something? When that guy said yes, I'm ready. Why? Because expectation doesn't need a bunch of negative nincompoops that don't believe nothing. Expectation needs some encouragement from people who had the same spirit, the same mind, the same desire, the same drive. We're living on the expectation that Jesus is coming back. And that expectation is enough to push me into holy living and righteous living and intensity of pain. I see you six foot seven Hopkins. I see you back there. Hey, all you missionaries, look at me. They, they won't let me be a missionary because I'm not called. <laughs> you look, look at me. You ready? You're fixing to carry your carcass out of here and go to Hell's Kitchen and wherever you've got to fight the good fight of faith. You need to put one of these in your wallet. So that when you deal with devils and demons and cultures and governments and situations, you can say, oh, I got new. It ain't by might and it ain't by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And my expectation is high. I'm going to build a church here. I'm going to, God. I'm going to win the victory. I'm not everything I'm supposed to be. I'm on my way to some place. I got two minutes. Sit down. I got five, five minutes. Jesus is here. Twenty-five. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. I feel better right now. <laughs> how that, how that streaker, that original streaker with them demons in him, living in the cemetery. How did he get delivered? It wasn't because he had a lot of faith. Watch this. He got delivered because the devils inside of him expected Jesus to act up. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. And he went into the synagogue and there was a man, hey Mark, with a withered hand. And the Bible said his critics watched to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Not if he would heal. That was a far gone conclusion. That guy heals all the time. They wanted to see whether he was going to mess up their concept and their idea. I think God has stepped into this conference, moving in this movement to change our ideology. Not our doctrine, but our mindset, our perception, our receptivity that God wants to show himself strong 
Yeah. Sister, I don't mean to embarrass you. Thank, thank, thank you, Tony. You made my day when you told me you'd wear my sign. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had one for you, Stark. You're crazy, too. Just, here you go. I, am I telling the truth, Teresa? She just took my picture. Did I look good? I, I have that sign right there on the piano next to my, my table. And, I, and I'm just sitting in there. I'm just clapping and praying. Man, just start to worship. And I just, don't I do it? I just jump up and go. All the carnal people, they go. All the desperate people, they go. All the hungry people, they go. Because if you ain't got the level of faith you need, you can have an expectation that will give you a miracle if you would expect at least as much from God as you do from your doctor. I'm, I'm almost there. Just give me just a minute. It's powerful. <coughs> the Gadarene got healed because the demons expected Jesus to cast him out. The woman of issue got healed because she said, I expect if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. Bartimaeus got healed because he expected if I can get an audience with the king, he'll give me what I want. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He expected God to act on the spot. The two blind men in Matthew 9, 27, who followed Jesus in the house, they expected to be made whole. I can't find anybody in the Bible who didn't expect to get something from Jesus. In fact, my study recently has showed me numbers of times in the Gospels, the four Gospels. You there, Dr. Bernard? You listen to it? You, you just check me and listen to what I'm saying. Numbers of times in the Gospels, the people who were critics of Jesus, who tried to catch him in his words, or damn him and condemn him over his works, you know what the Bible says they were? They were disciples of the Sadducees. So I did a study on the Sadducees. The Bible said the Sadducees were the group of church junkies who didn't believe in supernatural things. You know, the ones we have in our church. The Bible said they didn't believe in spirits. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in the supernatural. And what? God turned around and said, Well, you may not believe it, but watch me do it. Pow! Wow. And he did it anyway. Your atmosphere does not have to be perfect for you to get a miracle. All you've got to do is get desperate and release your expectation that God will keep his word. It's not by feeling. It's by faith. And faith comes out of expectation. Would you give me that scripture I wanted you to read for me, Reverend Mike? I think it's 317 and 18. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm messing this thing up so bad. Here, you want, you want some signs? Here, have some signs. I need somebody out in the front anyway. Yeah. You know how bad it ticks off people who are half demon possessed and cold refrigerator Pentecostals when you just walk by them and just go. <laughs> Said, I'd like to leave the sign on this place before the corpses all melt together. Would, would you? There's, some, there's some pews in our church. Doc, you could die of frigidation. <laughs> there hasn't been a move of God on that pew. There's mold on the cloth. There's super glue on their fannies. They're just there. I'm here to get my weekly sermon and go home and show how I can live my life without obeying it. Well, I'm going to just tell you now, I ain't afraid of none of you. If you've got people in your church like I've got it in ours that won't even clap their hands, you've got a damnable situation because the least you can do is be thankful. You ought to be thankful you woke up this morning. You ought to be thankful you didn't get shot in a McDonald's. You ought to be thankful you didn't have an aneurysm. You ought to be thankful you didn't lose your mind. You ought to be thankful that God kept you. You ought to be, you ought to be thankful that God answered a prayer somewhere in your life. You ought to be thankful that he hasn't let the devil take you out. David said, I'm thankful that you have not let my enemies triumph over me. I still got enemies. They're just not winning. Okay, sit down. We're almost done. Ten minutes, I'm finished. Read, read for me, Doc. 
For our light affliction. Yeah, now this is the guy who's talking about shipwrecked four or five times, beat with stripes, stripes and rods, damned and condemned, ridiculed, Jews chasing him all the time, his own brethren, the Bible said his own countrymen, and then he turns around and says, oh, all that puke stuff? Oh, that was just a light affliction. Which is but for a moment. Oh, see, that's why I call it light, because I measure it by eternity. I'm not locked into what can happen in time. Boy, I wish I... You, don't you get it? I'm a, I'm a creature of eternity that just happens to be passing through time. So I ain't going to let time hold me hostage because she backslid and she got pregnant and he died and she died and they got a divorce. I can't help none of that stuff. I'm not in charge of their lives. I can only preach the truth and believe God and do what I can. I am not going to be held hostage by people's failures. I'm not in charge of people's lives. Give me just a minute. Our light affliction, which is but, but for, for a moment, moment worketh for us, for us a, more, a far more exceeding, exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now here's the key to the verse. Read. While stop. We look not, Wait, no, stop. That's our problem. The while is a conjunctive statement, bringing the two thoughts together. So he says, all this junk that we go through and all this hell and problems and disappointments and unmet expectations, they still work for us while... We look not at things that are seen. Wait a minute. So you've got to stop looking at what you can see and start seeing things that you can't see by your flesh. You've got to become oblivious to the obvious. You've got to become blind to what is so that you can have what will be. You got to look at yourself like you're going to be healed. You got to look at yourself like you're going to have. Oh. All right, let, let me let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead, Rev. While, While we, we looked not the things which are seen, but, but the things, things which are which unseen. Are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Right. That, wait a minute, that is a big word. Temporal. It means subject to change. Stop. I'm not going no further. I'm fixing to have a fit right now. Well, we look not at the things that are subject to change. So we look at the things which are eternal, not subject to change. So I've got to take my eyes off the material and start getting my eyes on the eternal. I've got to get it off the flesh and get it on the spirit. I've got to be able to see into that world, hear from that world, feel from that world, because that's what energizes my expectation. Uh, 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 go, go to my Second Kings thing, Mike, and I'm going to finish right now. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to hear me. God's intentions, His revelations are all settled. They're already settled, like the Reverend said last night. They're here, but their fulfillment is in our hands. So therefore, you cannot experience what has been expressed and promised by God if you are not pregnant with expectation. Ain't a day I get up, get ready to go to church, I don't expect to preach like the best thing in shoes. Now you think I'm kidding you. I may be discouraged. I'm dealing with problems. People quitting and living like fools. But man, when I get ready to go, I expect that God's going to touch me. I expect God's going to anoint me. I expect God's going to bless the choir. I expect there's going to be more for me than those that are against me. I, I expect we're going to have growth and not loss. I'm, see? Now what? We got 3,000 people here and I got nine people saying, that's right. Oh no, you got to talk yourself into it. You got to walk up there and say, I'm going to preach better now than I did oh, than I did last week. I'm going to have a better church in six months than I have right now. God's going to show himself stronger in just a few days. Why? I'm pregnant with expectation. You're not going to have a change in anything if you don't expect a change. I got six minutes? Six, okay. Let's just sit down and I'll, and I'll try to finish. This is so powerful. And when he Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. Thank you, you're a wonderful man. Listen to this. If you don't remember anything, remember this one. This is powerful. Into your hands and my hands 
will be delivered the exact results of our thought lives. There will not be some mystical, magical, supernatural, spiritual, whatever harvest given to you and your thought life is as carnal as a dead duck. When that leper ran up to see Jesus, he expected Jesus to help him. He didn't know whether Jesus would, but he expected he could. When they let that man down through the roof the rest of the chapter, remember that story? He expected Jesus to fix him. He didn't think he was right. In fact, the first thing Jesus said, well, you're wrong spiritually. I better take care of your sin situation first. So he got two. He got what he expected after he got what he didn't expect. Now you know. Oh, God. The man with the withered hand, stretch forth your hand, and when he put it through, his critics watched and said, let's, let's see if he's going to heal now. You know, he's, he's got a real bad habit. He goes around healing all this stuff. And, and if he does it on a Sabbath, man, we're going to kill him with our religion because our religion supersedes God. You read one verse and it says, and Jesus looking about them, being grieved with them. That word grieved is angry. It's a love word. He was grieved because of the hardness of their hearts. God expects us to look and see with things with our heart. That's why he damned and condemned. Oh, yes, he called them hypocrites. The religious people of his day. Remember I told you he only condemned one thing in creation was a fig tree. I got news for you. There's one time he created, he condemned one human being. It was the man with one talent who didn't meet his expectation of increase. Go to all the conferences you want to. Buy all the tapes and the CDs and go to all the seminars you want to. But if you're not increasing... Okay. Sorry. Sorry. That's why Isaiah said, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths in the wilderness. That's where your expectation starts. In a situation that's adverse. He said, prepare a place in the wilderness. Not because of the times. In the wilderness. Prepare the Lord. In other words, expect God to come walking down into your wilderness. How did John get in the spirit on the Lord's day in Revelation 1 and 2? He said, I expect him to show up. Yeah, but it's so cruddy here. Dead bones, all kinds of sleaze, trash, junk. You're isolated from everybody. You ain't got no videos. You ain't got no tapes. What's the deal? I don't need any of that junk. I can step into it. Watch me get in the spirit. And he expected, uh, see how quiet it just got? The reason why some of you don't pray more than you do, you don't expect nothing to happen. Hey, Doc, this time's when I pray and I don't feel nothing, I don't sense nothing, I don't break through to nothing. That don't mean I don't pray expecting. I said, okay, if it didn't come now, it would come later. Why? Because he's got my address, knows my name, and he's in love with me. He can't help himself. He's in love with me. <laughs> I'm his Gentile girlfriend. I got a Jewish boyfriend in love with me. You're not hearing me. You're not, you're not hearing me. You're, 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 you're things off. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. So what is he saying? Jesus expects that the enemy will be totally defeated by his church before he comes back for his church. For he has already put all things under his feet. And he's the head and you're the body. And guess where the feet are located? You say, well, how come all this junk's going on? You're letting it go on. You and I are the ones that set the boundaries for the kingdom. All right, Mark, let's have a debate right now. True or false? If the devil could, if he could, would he infect heaven with cancer? Would he infect it with disease? Would he infect it with disharmony and dysfunction? Would he infect it with death? Sure. He's not allowed to do it. Why? He has no dominion there. You ready? He ain't got no dominion here either. The kingdom of God is within you. He can only have dominion when I agree with him. I, I got six minutes and I'm finished.
Sit down. I'm sorry. Sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to rock your little boat here. Expectation always precedes experience. Expectation is what builds the platform for your next performance. Didn't one writer say, he told that, that the prophet told that, that guy, fill this valley full of ditches. What are you filling it full of ditches for? Well, I expect water. You know why some of you never dig any ditches? You don't expect no water. It takes courage, man, to dig a ditch in the hot sun when there ain't nothing there. It takes courage to turn around and step in front of somebody and prophesy and say, bo -bo 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 -bo, and nothing changes. Remember when he cursed the fig tree? Nothing changed for a while. I wonder if Peter and the gang must have turned around and said, boy, he missed it this time. We've seen him speak to Lazarus that he got up. Jairus' daughter got up. The widow of Nain got up. We've seen Jesus speak to the storm, and it just stopped immediately. We've seen Jesus speak to the deaf, and they got well, and the blind they saw, and the lepers they were cleansed. But oh, the fig tree didn't respond. Delay is not denial. It started dying below the surface. It just took 24 hours to show up upstairs. If you would believe that God is doing something when you get prayed for, when somebody prophesies over you, when they lay their hands on you, whatever is causing the problem will die at the root and the fruit will disappear later. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish. Just sit down. I'm trying right now. Here we go. <laughs> Expectation precedes experience. The only reason that Abraham had for offering up Isaac was he expected God to lift him up. The reason why some of us won't lay down our nice gifted pet things, we don't expect God to raise it up. The reason why we don't give the money we ought to give is because we don't expect God that he's got more nickels than we have. Sit down and look at me. Don't bother me. I preach to a church just like it. It don't bother me at all. <laughs> Peter was told to cast the net, cast the hook, and then cast the net. Why? He expected something to happen. The centurion left because he had a promise from God. He expected the servant to be well. The Syrophoenician expected the daughter to be demon-possessed free. The nobleman went home expecting his son to be made well. Listen to me. The Bible said that multitudes came to Jesus. Watch. To hear and to be healed of their diseases. When are we going to start taking that and putting that as a banner over our church? Come on here and you can be hearing another sermon and you can be healed of your diseases. Let me go a little further. John said, Jesus said in John 10 and in John 6, watch. If I do not the works of my Father, don't believe me. Put that one over your baptistry. Doctor, if, if I do not the works of my Father, don't believe me. If my deeds don't back up my declarations, join another church. Because this one's a farce. Well, see how, how I made everybody nervous right now? Jesus turned around and said, if you don't think I'm the real deal, watch this. He told John the Baptist's disciples, and he preached the gospel to the poor, and he healed the sick, and he cast out devils, and he cleansed the lepers, and he said, tell them what you have now. Watch. Seen and heard. All they do with us is heard. See how quiet, see Brother Barnes how quiet it is? If we don't do the works of Jesus, we're not doing what God called us to do. You say, well, I've tried and it ain't worked. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. The Bible said, they who by reason of use have their senses exercised thereby. You know what that means? The more you do it, the better you get. Practice makes perfect. I know we believe practice for handball, volleyball, racquetball, golf. Typing, sewing, cooking. But we don't believe practice for spiritual stuff. How are you ever going to get better in spiritual stuff if you don't practice spiritual stuff? What we got? That ain't no problem. Six weeks. You don't even deserve six weeks. Still got to pray for you. Okay. 
I'm going to ask you a simple question. It's simple for me. I, I don't have all the gifts you guys got. I, I'm just old Jeffy. Just ask you a simple question. If Jesus were here and you were dying with some kind of sickness and you asked him to help you, now you've got to answer this. Would he heal you? Would he tell you you're learning so much about the love of God, he's going to let you rot to pieces? Or three, you don't have enough faith and you haven't lived a good enough life. What's the answer? Definitely number one. Number one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I expect something to happen right now. You stretch your hands towards him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healing of God enter in this body. I expect this thing to turn around. These lungs to expand with new air, with new strength. I take dominion over doubt and fear and unbelief and devils and every disease. I cast it at the feet of Jesus. Be well. Be whole. Be whole in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hand. Who needs to be healed? Who needs help? Who needs deliverance? Come on. Come on. Come on, believe. Expect God wants to make you well. Expect God wants to heal you. Expect God wants to deliver you. I didn't say emotion. I didn't say hype. I said I expect God to give me the experience of deliverance. Come on, it's time to pray. Come on, it's time to pray. You need to be healed. Come on. You need help. Come on, Jonathan. God's using you. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. It's time to speak to things and curse them. It's time to speak to stuff. Not to try to feel something. Speak to it. He said you can speak to this mountain and cast it in the sea. And if you do not doubt, that's our problem. Doubt steals and rapes and molests your expectation. That's why Jesus said the thief comes to steal. Steal what? Steal your expectation so you don't have your experience. Come on. Come on. I'm finished. I don't need to preach no more. I'm finished. I'm finished. Come on. Come on. Come on. We can have an experience right now. Ha! Shatala Mahaya. Come on. Come on, Doug. Come on, Eli. Come on. Who needs to be healed? Come on, you need someone around you to get prayed for? This isn't for just a handful of people. Brother King said it right. These signs shall follow them that believe. Expectation is the birthplace for your next miracle.